Hey guys, Classic here, and today we have episode 3 of my OOTP 23 tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be exploring the International Free Agency. And as you can tell, we are currently in my Oakland A's save. We are in 2024. We're not doing too badly. And today is the first day of the International Free Agency signing. Uh, so this is when the window becomes open and the players are introduced into the game. So what we're going to look at today is the factors that I take into consideration when looking at the international free agency and how I approach who should be signed and how I approach their signing. So first of all, you need to understand that for the international amateur free agency, you have a total of $5 million that you can spend uh, overall and in terms of signing a player to a signing bonus. So if you go after one player and spend $5 million to sign that player, then you won't be able to sign anyone else. If you go ahead and try to split your money and try to sign two players, keep in mind the other teams are also interested in these players. And if they get offered something better, you risk out uh, on losing both of those players. So right now, what I like to do is look at the players available, all the players available, and sort them by potential, going from best potential down to the lowest. And from what we can see here, uh, there are five that are particularly interesting. I try not to sign any players with a potential lower than 70 uh, unless they're older because when they're older their potential and their current ability should be closer to one another uh, right here we can see again there's five that are really interesting even so the at 72 is kind of low and we'll go into why i look for such high potential players so let's start off with sandro barbado here and as we can tell sandro is a 16 year old uh, you know, just turned 16 95 days ago. He has some really good potential to his bat. He's a line drive hitter. His defense isn't the best. And this is where it comes down to it, his personality traits. So from here, we can see that he's a high loyalty, high adaptability, and high greed type person. And if you watched my first video of this tutorial series, you'll see that in game settings, I like to go into uh, the players and face gen and enable show player personality ratings on the profile page. The reason I do this is because I believe that nowadays organizations are very careful with who they bring into their systems, uh, into their ball clubs, and they have a better idea not only of the capabilities of the player, but also who they are as a person. And so if I want to sign this player, I want to know what type of personality I'm getting into. And this is really helpful in OOTP because their personality goes a long way in how likely they are to reach this potential here. So a player with high loyalty, high adaptability, um, particularly the high adaptability, will make it a lot more likely for them to reach closer to this 80 potential. Because these players are still young, the likelihood of them actually reaching an 80 potential is fairly low uh, throughout the board for any of these players. However, there are certain personality traits that you should really look out for. One being adaptability, the other being work ethic, as we can see here on Mario Morales, and the next one being intelligence, as we can see here on Jose Gracia. If you find a player that has all three of those on uh, in one, then that's definitely a player you should consider because the likelihood of that player coming good is very high, especially if you combine that with a staff for your organization that is pretty excellent. So. Uh, just to show you what I'm talking about, if I go to my front office, then personnel, just looking, for example, at my rookie league here, we'll see in my hook, uh, my hitting coach for the rookie league, I have an excellent hitting coach, uh, teach hitting coach. My pitching coach right now is excellent teach pitching. 
And if I move up to the other rookie league, another excellent teach hitting. Another outstanding teach pitching. And you'll see that happen throughout my uh, my system here. You'll see that at every level, I have as good as I can get in teach hitting, teach pitching, and also in managers, uh, to be fair. For example, Adam Rod uh, Rosales has excellent development. And that's kind of the one you want to look for uh, when it comes to managers is their development. And obviously, their... Uh, their relationship is going to be pretty important as well. Uh, although not as important as, again, uh, how they handle development and how, they, and how your, your hitting and uh, pitching coaches help you on your organizational level throughout your system. So what you want to do here is try to increase the likelihood of these young players developing to their maximum potential, which normally it would be pretty low. It's not uncommon that a player with 80 potential only turns out to be 40 uh, current ability at the end of their trip towards the, the show. And so you want to help them along as best as you can by giving them the coaching staff that gets them there after they leave your international complex, as well as making sure you sign players with the, 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 the personality traits to help them achieve that. So when I look at someone like Sandro Barbado. Again, we look at his bats and his potential is very promising. It is elite level, although his eye and discipline is fairly low. He's a line drive hitter, but a pull hitter when it comes to ground ball and normal when it comes to fly ball. And his defense is lacking. So if this player, let's say in, in best case scenario, uh, he's got his high adaptability. He's going through your system smoothly. He develops into a 60, uh, 50, 60 rated player. And he has an above average bat, but not that great defense. And he's also going to have high greed, which means that his uh, contract negotiations are going to be uh, fairly difficult. And he's always going to want more money despite his high loyalty. So what do you do in this instance? Well, you, you could take a chance on him, or what I like to do is, aside from shop the rest of the players, is let an organization take him or offer him a lower amount of money to see if he would be willing to take that contract if there's no one else I'm interested in. But those are really the type of things that I would look forward. So he, he's got some promising stats in that he's got really good personality traits, aside from the high greed, and he's got really good bat. But he's only a line drive hitter, a pull hitter for ground ball, and his defense isn't great. So he might just end up being what he's expected to be, a bench player throughout his career. Next up, we have Jose Barra, who is a center fielder. Again, looking at what he has to offer, we can see that he has an even better bat, uh, potentially, than we saw with Sandro here. And we see that he is normal batter ball profile, no normal ground ball tendency, pull hitter when it comes to his fly balls, um, decent speed and stealing. And we can see also that his defense is much better. He also has high adaptability and high greed. So just like earlier with Sandro, he's going to be looking for higher contracts when the time comes. But again, high adaptability is very good for how likely he is to hit his potential. And again, if he only hits the 40, 50, 60 range, at least he's going to be serviceable defensively as well as being average to above average with his bat uh, at worst. Or, you know, if he really develops well, then you have a really good talent here. Again, only 16. Uh, so very interesting option. Moving down, we have Mario Morales, who here we can see has two of my favorite traits, which are adaptability and work ethic. Now, this is the type of player that I would be more interested in. He has an elite bat potential. He is a fly ball hitter. He has decent defense. And again, he has these personality traits that I really, really like. And not to mention that his injury proneness is durable. So this is a guy who won't get injured very often, which means that he's, he's more likely to get more game time and more practice and allow him to develop better. He's got the work 
he's got the personality traits to get him there, uh, the work ethic to get him there, and again, even if he only achieves the lower part of his potential, which would be maybe 50 because of this personality class, your staff, uh, and his durability, he's going to be an above average bat uh, to a great bat with some serviceable defense once again. So this, in my opinion, would be the player that I would personally go after if I was interested in signing someone in this draft. Next up, we have Hugo Moreno, who, again, elite batter, but terrible defense, high greed, and that's it. This for me is a big no. Uh, I would not offer this player a contract unless you know he was the last player left and he wasn't asking that much and he was still available at the end of the draft, uh, sorry, of, of the free agency signing, he would be a player I, I might try to sign. But if not, I'm going to let another team sign him. And again, the reason I do that is because if he turns good and he's been serving time in another system, then maybe I'll trade for him because that's kind of how it is. Uh, but I will not offer him $5 million, which I'm pretty sure he would be asking. Yeah, $5 million right off the bat for someone who can't play defense and would be a first baseman for me who has a terrible personality who has terrible personality traits and you know will more than likely not achieve his potential here and finally we have Jose Gracia who is a catcher which makes him you know a pretty interesting person especially with a bat like this uh, here we can see that he has a 55 catcher ability, which isn't so bad because in this iteration of OTP, defensive catchers aren't as important, uh, as last year's. So in OTP 22, although, uh, it's still useful to have and knowing that his bat can achieve some good heights. However, he is 16 and only has a rated potential of 72. According to my scout, he does have a rated potential of 80 according to the OSA ratings. And his personality traits, once again, really the best you can find aside from him missing work ethic with adaptability and intelligence. And the low greed is also a great benefit. So personally, I'm a big fan of this player as well. Uh, but if I had to choose out of the five players we looked at, I would try to offer uh Hugo, uh, sorry, Mario Morales, the contract and the $5 million uh, that I would try to sign him. Because even though it says here that his demand is 4.6, the likelihood of me making that amount is, uh, of, of him signing for that amount is pretty low, especially if another team tries to come after this player. So that's the other thing you need to consider. All of these players are available to all teams within the, the big leagues, which means that if you were interested in, say, Mario Morales, and you try to sign him, if you don't offer him a max uh, contract right off the bat with a signing bonus of $5 million, it's very possible that you miss out on that player. Because if I were to offer him $5 million and uh, less than $5 million, so let's say I'm going to try and get him right here, um, even though I know that the chances of me signing him are virtually non-existent, so let's do that here, ask for his response, submit the offer. And we're going to go ahead and advance this and see if we get a reply from uh, the player. So here we are, and we're watching my games go through. And we get a response saying that um, Mario Morales was offered a better contract by the Diamondbacks. So if we were to try and offer Mario Morales a contract now, we'll see that we've missed our window because he's received a max offer from the Diamondbacks. So if we go back into the international amateurs, we'll see that it's possible that certain players are no longer available. So let's say I am still interested in, uh, let's say, Jose Yara here. Oh, so Baltimore has already submitted him a contract. It's not as good. It's not a max offer, but it's definitely uh, something that's not to scoff at. So if I ask here and he's like, okay, so we're still able to offer it to him. If we fast forward here, 
And again, jump another week. Oh, Jose Yara has been offered another contract, this time by Texas. And if we try to offer him a new contract, we see that he has received a max offer. So here, we, if we return to the page, we can now see that Jose Yara is the only player left. And that's because he, he was waiting to see if we would negotiate with him. Unfortunately, we can't. Uh, we see here that Hugo Moreno has been offered a $2.1 million deal. Um, Barbado here has been offered a $2.1 million deal. And Morales did accept the $5 million contract, signing bonus contract from the Philadelphia Phillies. So be very mindful of your team's finances when you approach the international free agency. Also be mindful of the type of player you're bringing in, specifically when it comes to their personality traits, uh, their defensive ability versus their batting profile. And also just how you approach this is that if you have a player you want, offer him the max bonus contract as soon as possible because chances are that player is not going to be around for very much longer and you're going to want to lock him down uh, immediately and avoid what we just saw here, missing out on two players because we were trying to save a couple, uh, a million or two. Hopefully you guys found this video interesting. If you have any questions or any uh, advice or anything you'd like to see, go ahead and leave a comment below. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you are interested by the content I've been putting out. And go ahead and check out the other videos in this series if you want by clicking on either of the links. And until next time, thank you very much and peace.